So I hear you're heading to Japan soon. I'm sure you'll be heading mostly to the places like Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, if it's your first time going there. For me, um, because I lived there for roughly two years, I have some of my favorite places I wanted to share with you today. These are like the type of places either I've gone to more than once um, just because I liked it so much or I just know like these are great places I'm going to take my friends and family there. So whenever my friends or family visit, I actually take them to these places. There are five places I wanted to share with you specifically in the Kansai region. I lived in Kansai region, which usually consists of like Osaka, Kyoto, Nara, Wakayama, Hyogo prefecture, Shiga prefecture, maybe Mie prefecture. First off in Osaka, I, you know, everyone knows Shinsekai, Dontonbori, things like that, and even Osaka castle, which is great. Um, usually once I visit those places once, I'm I'm kind of good. I, I get a, I get the right vibe, but they're good for the first time to visit. But one that I recommend and I actually enjoy going to multiple times is actually the Osaka Aquarium Kayukan. Now, it's no secret of a place. You can find it on the list of TripAdvisor, but I think a lot of people at first glance will just think, mm, it's an aquarium. I don't really need to go because my hometown has an aquarium. I know. I understand. That was the same for me. <laughs> That was the same for me, but I was wrong, okay? This aquarium is different. The architecture of the aquarium really changes your experience. It's very immersive. It doesn't feel like you are looking into an exhibition of sea creatures, you know? It feels more like you are part of their world. And the way they design it is just so, oh, it's so smart. Yeah, you really feel like you're part of their world. And every person I've brought there has found it very memorable. It usually takes you around two hours about two hours to go through the whole thing give or take okay next up is in nara maybe i have a bias here but i was living and working in nara so for me whenever i did not want to go into the city like osaka or kyoto and maybe still wanted a taste of culture you really have to go to nara city i mean nara is essentially kyoto's older sister and if you know where to look you'll find a lot of great culture i like it because it's not too crowded you can honestly finish nara city in like half a day unless you want to take it extra slow maybe you can give it a day most of the things that happen are before 5 p.m. Once 5 p.m. hits, a lot of things close, a lot of shops close. And if you can, when you go to the, the giant Buddha temple and you keep going up, actually, you will reach like another temple that can give you a nice view of Osaka. It's pretty nice. It takes, it's definitely a lot of steps. So be careful bringing, you know, anyone who has bad knees. I would give it like a relaxing break, especially if you've been traveling around Osaka or Kyoto and you want to take a break from that. You know, and if you don't want to do Nara City, you want to go like more nature. Another place I really enjoyed to just take a look at waterfalls is Akame 48 Waterfalls. It's kind of at the border, a little bit past Nara. It goes a little bit into Mie Prefecture. There's a lot of water. It's very deep color. Highly recommend it. It's kind of a short trip. There's a longer hike, I believe, but I didn't take the longer hike at the time just due to time constraints. Moving from there, once you're like maybe from Nara City, moving up north uh, along your way, before going to Kyoto City, I actually recommend stopping by Uji, Kyoto, the town of Uji, U-J-I. This is where a lot of the matcha, it's like the matcha center of Kyoto. It's also the setting for the tale of Genji. And what I like about this town is I honestly go to this town when I want to have a taste of Kyoto, Kyoto culture, you know, getting in all that matcha, getting in all that hojicha, visiting the nearby shrines, seeing some beautiful nature views without the crowds, without the crowds of Kyoto. Over time living there, I just kind of like tried to find equivalent local experiences that give me the experience I want without the crowds. And then next up from there, if you go to the northern mountains of Kyoto, I highly recommend the town of Kifune, K I F U. -E. N -E. um, and then maybe close to that there is the temple called Kurama Dera. I noticed that throughout the four seasons it's very beautiful. In the fall you have the fall leaf foliages. One time I went uh, during when they had like a cute flea market at the Kifune Shrine. It was so beautiful when I climbed up Kurama Dera, the temple. It's a nice hiking path that you can look out and see a beautiful scenery. And then when you go back down, if you go back right when like sun sets, it's kind of pushing it, but it will look so mystical with the way the shrines, like the, the temple lights, the temple lanterns illuminate. And you're just like, wow, it is an experience. There's always something happening every season. So in autumn, there's the beautiful autumn leaves. Uh, I went during summer. There were a lot of these restaurants that had you could dine on top of the river, like an actual flowing river. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they set it up. And then some of those meals you may expect to be expensive, but there was this one place my friend found where you could eat like flowing water noodles called Nagashi Somen. 
for about, I don't know, 1500 yen, 2000 yen. I can't remember exactly, but it was cheap. And it was only a 20 minute experience though. Um, but we had to wait two hours. So I highly recommend if you can to just wait like an hour before they open, just get in line and wait. Cause it's first come first serve. Be careful if it's a rainy day because then it will be canceled. So check the website. Okay, next up is if you are not going to Hakone near Tokyo, then I recommend you go to Arima Onsen Town in Hyogo Prefecture. Arima Onsen Town, can you can probably take about a day trip there or like an overnight trip there. I do recommend getting maybe a hotel. Some of your hotels or accommodations will have their own onsens. For example, my friends and I went to Hotel Hana Yodo. They actually were connected to a larger, more expensive expensive accommodation and they let us use the onsen there which is very nice there are also onsens where let's say you sometimes the accommodations are pretty pricey in that case i recommend the more regular onsen kind of buildings the affordable ones are kin no yu and gin no yu which i see tourists sometimes going to and i'm gonna sound really dumb right now but pretty much the water is special <laughs> <laughs> it has a different color for one. It's like very gold, very bronze looking because it has all of these sulfuric things, minerals, minerals, that's all I was trying to find, minerals in the water, which is really good for your skin supposedly. But I do notice that when I went to the Kinoyu, the water was hotter, more hot than other onsens I've been to. So just keep that in mind. Other places that my coworker has recommended is actually Taiyonoyu. This is if you want to have a more amusement park experiences of baths. There's a food court and they give you everything you need. This is great going with family or friends and you can just relax. It's a whole day spa kind of vibe. Last, if you have time, if you're in the Kobe region or Kobe city-ish, so for example, if you got off at Shinkobe Shinkansen Station, uh, close by to that is the Kobe Nunobiki Herb Gardens. I highly recommend you visit this place. I have never seen just a beautiful, well-kept garden, a variety of flowers on top of a mountain. You go up a cable car to get to this herb garden and it's beautiful because you see on one side, it's just green mountains, nature. And then another side, you see, you look, go down, you see the bay and you see Kobe City and you're like, wow, that duality is just amazing. I went during the springtime, so there's a lot of spring florals growing and that's why it's really beautiful. But uh, I know that in the winter they have winter illumination so I hope they probably have some things going on in summer and fall that will look just as beautiful and I highly recommend you go to this herb garden or after that uh, maybe you go to Kobe City maybe you made a reservation to eat a meal for Kobe beef and then you head back to Osaka and then maybe you go off to another part of Japan or you leave from Kansai airport and that's it okay so my mic ran out of battery I really enjoyed sharing some of my favorite places. I hope to share more of some of my favorite places and experiences that I got to do in Japan so that I can give you some ideas about your next trip. And I also just want to hear from you guys, like maybe if you've already been to Japan, what are some of your favorite places that were so memorable to you? And maybe why? Sometimes it's not even about the place, but the experience, whether it be the person or what you did with your friend. And I would love to hear it. But yeah, if you want to get some more ideas, then please click subscribe below. I do want to share some more of my time in Japan. Okay, see you guys in the next video. Bye.